have some great students. They're hardworking, successful, exciting, and even a little humorous. I teach at Northwest Whitfield High School in Tunnel Hill, Georgia as an agricultural education teacher and I cover subjects such as horticulture, animal science, natural resources, forestry, you name it. If it's in agriculture, we've got it. It's a really exciting place to teach with great facilities and of course great students. We're excited to have an administration that works really well with us and also students that are really excited about going and being successful inside the classroom and outside the classroom. But even with all these great things going for us, I still find myself missing something. Maybe just something that I could add that would allow me to get consistent, high quality work, motivated students, and engagement on a consistent basis. So I set out to find that one missing piece in my classroom that could really make a difference. And through my time at Full Sail University, I used my capstone as that missing link. And I chose to figure out exactly what it was that I could add to my classroom that would allow me to walk through the halls and find that success. I wanted to find out that if I increased technology and teaching techniques that I used in my classroom, would I be able to make a difference in student motivation? If I created new opportunities and more choice for students, would they be more motivated to learn within my classroom? At the end of the day, I want to be able to leave knowing that I found that key to increase student motivation. The sky is the limit when researching about student motivation. While studying the literature available, I learned that the combination of increased technology use and the availability along with the increased awareness and teaching adaptations for multiple intelligence of students proved to be areas where teachers could make big improvements in increasing student motivation. I found that multiple researchers noted success with increasing technology in the classroom in addition to teaching techniques. Penna supported Burke's research of today's digital native by noting that in language classrooms, success had been found by mixing tra traditional face-to-face -face teaching with internet-based computer instruction. More interesting to me was when I found that researchers had found a strong bond between students whose teachers directly taught to their different intelligent types. It increased motivation and stimulated those learners to have a better outcome in the end. This research proved to be exactly what I wanted to add to my classroom. Excelling students, motivated students, and strong bonds between myself and my students. For my cycle one and my cycle two, I started my students with a pre-survey to determine what areas I might could change in reference to technology. I wanted to see what experiences they had already had, what successes and failures they felt like they had gone through, and what things could be done in my classroom. I chose to do my cycle one with my animal science and biotechnology class. For the cycle one, I gave the students several options in the beginning. I started with traditional education, stand and deliver, lecture, here it is guys. And I went through all the different hormones that were a part of the estrus cycle in domestic livestock. Through this unit, I taught them all the things that they needed, but I wanted them to turn around and be able to teach their fellow classmates. This is where I changed things. I first gave them an example of my own and said, I want you to do this better than this example. You have no restrictions whatsoever in how you do your project, but I want you to create something in which you can teach your fellow student. For their presentation, they could choose any method that they liked, whether it was technology or not. Surprisingly, through this cycle one, almost all of my students chose to do a technology-based project in which they strived to do better than their teacher. Here's an example of one of those student works. Well, hey there. What's got your tail a-twitching? 
Well, you see, you sexy hunk of meat, you. It's called the Esther Cycle. Well, I sure do like this new attitude of yours, Miss Daisy. What is this so-called Esther Cycle? It all starts with FSH, a hormone that comes down from my brain to my ovaries. It tickles my ovaries into making little follicles. Oh my, Daisy, you're making me blush. Don't be silly, Romeo. This, this only is what tells my ovaries to go into heat. Well, I do enjoy tickling. And then what happens? Well, you see, then I go into heat, and my sweet little ovaries produce estrogen, which flows all the way back to my brain. And then, my brain sends out the luteinizing hormone, because it's just that smart. Oh, Daisy, I'm sorry. What is a luteinizing hormone exactly? Oh, no, no, it's all right. I forgot that most people just aren't as smart as me, especially boys. When the luteinizing hormone is what opens up the graphene follicle and sets the egg free and bursts open, it's called the corpus hemorrhagicum. But, Daisy, you aren't a hen. You don't have eggs. Oh, Romeo, you have so much to learn. Anywho, after the corpus hemorrhagicum is formed, it turns into the corpus luteum, which is like a crater, which produces progesterone. The progesterone is what maintains my pregnancy. But, Daisy, you aren't pregnant either. Exactly. So instead, the progesterone stops being produced, and instead, it is replaced by PGF2 alpha, which comes from my brain. This tells my ovaries to stop preparing for a baby, and the cycle starts over. Well, Daisy, does this mean you're available? Oh, Romeo, shut up and let's go get some hay. I chose to do my cycle two with my basic agricultural science and technology class. In particular, through a program that we've just started at our school called the Farm to School program. I wanted to implement some new technology to this basic agricultural science and technology course. And one of the newest things popping up in agriculture are QRs. QRs are found on almost every package that we can find, whether it's a magazine or a produce item. But it's a really cool way of showing these students what new technologies are available and how we can use them in agriculture. Cycle 2 involves students being assigned one plant that was to be sold at the annual plant sale. Each student was to take that plant, find a great website that told everything that we needed to know about that plant as well as what the cons consumer needed to know about that plant. They were to shorten the URL and create a QR that could be used on the labels that we used during the plant sale. Not only did we use them during the plant sale, but we used them in our farm to school gardens as well. Students created those on the computer, attached them to the labels that were used in the greenhouse, and students used those labels with customers to explain what things those plants needed at their home. It was a huge success. We even used QRs to link them to our plant sale website and our farm to school websites that we created in class. I even got to share this lesson with other teachers in the farm to school program from across the state of Georgia. Officials from the state of Georgia Department of Education also found out about the new activities that we were doing through farm to school and the QR activities that we'd been doing. We were invited to host state board members, our superintendent in our county, and all the administrators that we could possibly round up. Students were able to describe all the different activities that they had done, including their QR and shortened URL activity, also known as My Cycle 2 activity. Students really enjoyed the opportunity to be able to do something so big. As a matter of fact, we were also awarded money based on this cycle to activity. We just recently received over $1,700 and were publicized on local TV stations, thanks in part to the increase in technology that we chose to add to our classroom. In the future, I will be adding more technology to my classes because the increases in motivation were off the charts. One of the things that I'm adding this year is an LMO. I'm using Schoology in my animal science and biotechnology class just as an intro to try to help me along and increase that student motivation just as I got to do through cycle one and cycle two. Hopefully the successes will continue. <laughs>